I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I think we need to rebrand. rebrand. Okay. Oh, what, so, what, are you, what are you thinking? I think that cryptids is too normal, too generic. Not enough people, too many people doing cryptids. So... I'm thinking we go and we do a true crime pro- podcast. A true crime podcast. Because cause those are truly the most unique thing in the existence of anything. <laughs> <laughs> Your laughter makes me think that you don't believe that, which is upsetting. The uh There's a few there's a couple good ones out there. <laughs> Hmm. Well, well, what about a movie podcast? Because we can always do a movie podcast, right? Uh, that's never been done. That's true. That has never, ever been done before. Right? Like, we could do a movie podcast. We Those could are... just watch bad movies? Yeah, we could do that. And then we yeah. could talk about it. We could call it, um, um, Why Was This Made? Yeah. Why Is This a Thing? Oh, talking about Why Is This a Thing, in the uh-huh. uh, pre-roll before Godzilla... Yeah. There's a whole there's that that movie where the whole movie is just a guy likes Bruce Springsteen. Like this just like it's just a I, kid it likes Bruce Springsteen music. I am legitimately I'm legitimately excited to see that on Netflix. That yeah, right. I'm not going to see it when it's I'm not going to see it in theaters, but it's the whole I don't know understand how that got out of the like the 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 pitch Cause like the 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 the, the trailer is all, um, you like Bruce Springsteen? That's not good music. And then the kid puts on a jean jacket and he starts, and he's like, "No, I love Bruce Springsteen music." And then like that's the whole whole thing. It's, the film is called Blinded by the Light. Oh um, man! So Blinded by the Light. Um... In it, he goes to... Uh, we know for a fact he goes to America at some point. Yeah. That's the only thing I know. Um, and he goes to America, and the guy asks him, why are you in America? And he said, to go visit the the, the town hometown of Bruce Springsteen. And the guy's reaction is, I couldn't think of a better reason why to go come to America than to go to, <laughs> go to the home yes. of the boss. And I'm like, I somehow refuse to believe that that actually would ever happen. But, but, um, I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. And it is inspired by the life of journalist uh, Safraz Manzur um, and his obsession with Bruce Stringsky. So that is the whole plot, is it's, it's, a, it's really a just biopic. a guy that likes Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, it looks like it's a biopic of some kind. Yeah. Um, let me see. Spring. Um, he published a book, Greetings from Berry Park, a memoir that detailed his life growing up in Luton and his twin impacts upon his life. Uh, well, I guess there's a spoiler here. Uh, the death of his father in 1995. I'm going to assume that comes up at some point. Uh, in the music of Bruce Springsteen. Okay. Um... Manzur admired the United States wishing to live there, but the experience of witnessing the 9-11 attacks in 2001, um, he came to view Britain as being his true home. So that's going to be a wild movie. Um, when is it set? 1987. So I'm going to assume none of those bits make it in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it looks it looked good, but it looked like something I wouldn't watch in the theater. Yeah. And that's not a against it i just i'd rather watch it at home yeah when i can like you know, stop it or walk away <laughs> or yeah yeah um there is there was another movie in the the uh, previews yeah uh there was uh what was it called uh oh yeah joker oh yeah so 
the fun story about that for John, I leaned over to you, Brandon, at the start of it. I'm like, this is a weird Joker movie. Completely joking about the fact. Like, I was like, this is some, like, weird-ass clown movie, right? Yeah. And I made a joke about the fact that, you know, the Joker's a weird dude, so yada, yada, yada. Turns out, it actually, uh... It actually was the Joker movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I kid you not, that happened. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. As soon as as soon as it said Joker, I looked at you. Because <laughs> like, I, I didn't, the same thing. I did not think it was a, a, a Joker movie. I thought it was just like a movie that's about a weird like circus, like a clown that can't cut it, and it just became weird. Mm-hmm. But then it was the Joker movie. <laughs> I it was very strange. Also, did you notice that uh, the comedy club that he was performing in was called Pogo's? Oh, was it? Yes, I did not. Holy cow! Okay. Which, for people who don't know and aren't like don't listen to true crime podcasts on the reg, uh, Pogo was John, John Wayne Gacy's Gacy. clown. Yeah. Yeah. So, fun little detail there. Yeah. Uh, also, he's apparently in this this universe. Uh, the Joker has some real serious mama issues. Yeah. Let's we'll just leave it at that. Oh yeah. I do like that they they uh, are going back to the uh, um, uh, the the old Batman movies uh, Joker hairstyle. Yeah. Because I just thought that was cool. And still, like, the tight Ooh. slicked back. We lost, lost John. Our internet froze. Uh, so I'm just going to keep second. talking. Like, the, the slicked back hair. Uh, they've got Yeah, the yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they're going away from uh, the nightmare creation that is... Uh, what's his name? From the Suicide Squad. Um, oh, um... That guy. He's a, he's Le- a messed Lord, up dude. Lord, Jay, not Jay Leno. Leto? Jared Leto. Jared Leto. Jared Leto. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, he was like, from what I heard, he was not a good dude to do a movie with. Oh, hard to work with? Uh, He's like a method actor, and he's pretending to be the Joker, which the Joker, played straight, is a nightmare human being who should not be allowed to live. Yeah, um, method actors sound like the worst thing ever. And I heard that he may have like sent used condoms to his co-stars. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, so... you know, that thing that the Joker does all the time in the comics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's our, there's our movie podcast. Let us know what you think. Maybe we'll do it again. Maybe that'll become, that, that's what's Cryptopedia's gonna turn into, right? Yeah, just the movie podcast. Mm-hmm. Where we talk about trailers from movies that we've seen recently. Oh yeah, we should do that. So, three, two, one. It's a movie. <laughs> that's how we, uh, that's how we end the podcast. We, Brandon does the clackety thing, and then I say it's a movie. <laughs> seems good yeah um but in actuality this is uh cryptopedia a podcast where we sometimes talk about cryptids and then other times we talk about poop monsters poop monsters which i guess is a cryptid in its own right yes i'm john i'm brandon <laughs> and i refuse to read the copy i wrote for the- <laughs> um so this is a continuation of uh, episode 36, which was continued in episode 38 in air quotes, um, which was suggested by our Hodag patron, Connor Hughes. Um, credulous sources are the same as as the previous two episodes, The Bridgewater Triangle, uh, which is a documentary, and Mysterious America by Lauren Coleman. Um, our more skeptical sources and more in-depth sources, of course, are always mentioned um so if you haven't listened to last week's episode you don't really need to listen to last week all of last week's episode you can probably listen to the first 20 minutes and you get everything uh (laughs) let's change that you could probably listen to 
skip the first 13 minutes, then yeah. listen to 20 minutes. Then, then skip the next 13, <laughs> yeah. then listen to 10. Yeah. Yeah. Long story short, Brandon told me some very upsetting news that de- totally derailed me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is part three of two for the Bridgewater Triangle. Yeah, man. Um, so quick review for the previous two episodes. Um, traditionally, the Bridgewater Triangle is drawn between the three towns of Abington, Rehoboth, and Freetown in South, South, southeastern Massachusetts. Uh, for years, the Bridgewater Triangle has been a hotbed of paranormal activity. Stories of ghosts, cryptids, and even demons abound in this haunted region. That, that's some copy I wrote yeah. uh, three episodes ago. <laughs> uh, so, so far, we've covered Brazen Bigfoot, Pesky Pukwudgie, uh, Curious Cats, and uh, uh, Petulant Poopers, I guess. Petulant Poopers. Um, but there's a lot more in the region, uh, so let's let's continue with the ghost story. Okay. Yeah. So, um, there's a link there, Brandon. Let us do it. Is it clickable? I don't see it. The, 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 the ghost, ghost in action one. one. You gotta click that, because I couldn't... Unfortunately, I couldn't get a good, uh... I couldn't get a, a Oh, to, okay. It's right here, it's right here. I, I was right busy here. looking at Shaggy. <laughs> yeah, well, Shaggy's there to, oh. to ward off spirits. I like Shaggy's it. there for the spirits, yeah. So, uh, for our first ghost story, because we have two and a half this week. Um, two and no a half cryptids. ghost stories? Yeah, there's no cryptids this week. Is the but, half part uh, how he became a ghost? Mm, the half part is because the ghost isn't the main part of the story. Gotcha. It's a story with ghosts in it. Um, <laughs> so our first ghost is the red-headed hitchhiker of Route 44, Rehoboth. Um, so this hitchhiker is for the most part, a pretty classic hitchhiking story. Yeah. Right. So like a hitchhiking ghost story rather. Yeah. Um, it was first collected in the new England ghost files by Charles Turek Robinson, which unfortunately I couldn't get a copy of. Um, and the redheaded hitchhiker of route 44 is what I like to call a standalone complex, but that's bullshit. <laughs> Uh, so it's not a real philosophical concept. Yeah. And it's probably better to call it an urban legend, but we're anime as fuck here. Oh yeah. Um, and I really like standalone complex and I Mm -hmm. like the whole concept of the laughing man being something that created out of nothing, like internet rumor. Yeah. That resulted in it manifesting itself. It, it's kind of like a weird mimetic tulpa, the standalone complex. Yeah. Which I think is cool. Um, I just wanted to talk about the standalone complex. It's really just an urban legend. <laughs> um, so, in this inter iteration, I- iteration, yeah, in this iteration of uh, Hitchhiking Ghost, the hitchhiker in question is a man wearing a red flannel shirt, dirty jeans, boots, longish red hair, and a big bushy red beard, or as I'd like to call him. Nearly everyone who lives in the Hudson Valley. Yeah. Yeah, or Yukon Cornelius. Yeah, Yukon Cornelius as well. Um, if he starts doing dentistry, then you know that he's Yukon Cornelius, though. Yeah. Because he's assisting in dentistry at that point. Um, and he's assisting the elf whose name I don't remember. Yeah. It's, he, wants uh... to be a, he wants to be a dentist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, these descriptions vary uh into the state of his attire like so some of them it's more disheveled some of it's cleaner um and even the level of solidity he appears to possess depends on the account with some alleging he has a more ghostly countenance meaning you can see through him kind of yeah. like the 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 gif i sent yeah yeah incorporeal that, that that's a that's a image from that's an image from uh uh, the Bridgewater Triangle documentary. Oh, is it? And that the whole segment about the redheaded hitchhiker of Route 44. After you're done listening to this podcast, uh, I totally recommend watching just that bit. Yeah. Because it's probably the funniest part of this this entire video. Oh this god. Entire movie. <laughs> well, it looks pretty good. Yeah. If I was that guy, pretty... I would have crashed though. It would have been too spooky. 
Yeah, I probably would have crashed too, let's be fair. Um, so, it should also be noted that the eyes of the entity vary. Um, some of them describe the, them as soulless, which I kind of feel bad for the ghost, because isn't he literally all soul? Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. poor thing. Um, and then others say that they're normal, but they're somewhat upset, unsettling, and even more alleged that they have a supernatural glow. Oh, are you pregnant? The The ghost is pregnant, yes. The, yeah. They're having a baby. He's having a food baby. Oh. Yeah, he's got the meat sweats right now. Oh. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a rough childbirth. Yeah. It's, it's going to split the porcelain. I mean, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh So, honestly, level of discrepancy, not surprising. It's a ghost story, right? It's an urban legend ghost story. Uh, which is, uh, frankly, kind of common. <laughs> Most of the ones I've read. Yeah. Um, now, while I don't have access to the original book collecting these stories, they do seem to follow a pretty, like, distinct pattern. Right? Yeah. It's a hitchhiking ghost story. They It, it follows the pattern of the hitchhiking ghost. The hitchhiker, yeah. spotted on the side of the road by the driver. The driver may be alone, and interestingly, he may have multiple passengers. Or shape, okay. for that matter. Yeah. Um, Women can drive, They stop. Too. They can drive. They can definitely drive. Yep. Uh, I just say he because the person who was driving in the video I watched, the documentary I watched, which in this case, it literally was a documentary. Yeah. Which is the first time in the history of this podcast when I called something a documentary it actually was. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, it was being driven by a man. Uh, so they stop, pick the pick the the hitchhiker up yeah um appearing in the back seat typically doesn't seem to be his main style but i did see a story or two in which it did happen okay um and in most cases he'll hop into the back seat um completely silent right that's weird and he always in most of the story like the majority of the stories it's always the back seat that he jumps into yeah. not the front even if the front is open then how will the driver know where he's trying to get to uh, well, what he does is he kind of, like, gestures the direction the driver is driving, right? Okay. When he's asked where to go. Yeah. Um, I just be like, get out of my car, weirdo. What are you... Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't have... I would have even stopped to pick him up. I'm sorry. That's true. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I. In some states, it's actually illegal to pick up hitchhikers, too. Oh, is it? Yeah. Like, some areas, like, um, on 84... Like, outside of prisons, probably. Yeah. It's illegal to pick up hitchhikers outside of prisons. I'm almost positive but as always if i say something where i'm almost positive make sure you research that before you start spreading lies that john started um (laughs) uh, at some point during the the trip this hitchhiker disappears um sometimes it's literally in sight of the driver when it like just like flickers away yeah or when they like look back and say hey what's going and they're like, where'd he go? Yeah. Right? Um, to finish the encounter, once the driver usually realizes that the hitchhiker's gone, mm-hmm. um, in a sense of so, uh, in a sense of showmanship, the ghost has a tendency to uh, end with a bit of an audio closer, typically oh. a lap or a taunt. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember what this is. Ah, uh, yes. Companion. Away from Shabbat. Call her husband. Say she's banging a whore. Dennis, up those oh, stairs. Is that it? That's what the ghost says. I am proposing to. I, 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 Brandon. Yeah. It's been two weeks since I wrote this. Two and a half weeks. Uh huh. I forgot that that was the link. <laughs> I spent so much time trying to find a good Re- Frank Reynolds quote for that scene. <laughs> I was expecting like a menacing chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. Yeah. Everything I do is comedic. Yeah. I don't take anything seriously anymore. <laughs> uh, are they still making it? It's always sunny. They are. Okay. What? Huh? Oh. For some reason, a video started. Yeah. Uh, oh. oh, season seven. Frank's Pretty Women. Gang goes to the Jersey Shore. Oh, wait. That's that's already been 
Have I seen season 13 yet? The the gang makes Patty's great again. I have not seen that season. Mac finds his pride. <laughs> oh, okay. I haven't seen this. I haven't seen season 13 yet. Yeah, apparently... Um, well, have you seen season 12? Uh, I don't think that so. Was... I think I saw up to nine. Season 12 was... The... There was a water park episode, and yeah. I think that... Yeah. The Gang Turns Black was the opener. Oh. Um, that was the one that has, like, these are the rules. Yeah. And uh, during the entirety of that, Frank almost says extremely racist stuff. Oh, God. Or he tries to say extremely racist stuff. <laughs> um, the season before that, I think that uh, Mac came out as gay finally. Okay. Um, and then during season 11, Frank, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, Frank, uh, Dennis, Dennis leaves the gang. Oh, does he? Yeah, but he comes back. It looks okay. like, like if you look at season 13, he's like yeah. literally in the, he's literally, literally in the first episode of the season. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I don't know how you do the. I don't know how you do. It's always sunny, sunny in Philadelphia without like one of the, the four. Yeah, it'd be it'd uh, be pretty well difficult. one of the five rather. But yeah, regardless, this has been the another sub podcast in this episode. Yeah, <laughs> we do a lot of sub podcasts. Lots of them. Lots of them. I mean, we have. Let's see. So we have Critopedia. Yeah. And then on the Patreon, you have Lilyfield Lane. Yep. You have um, Lover's Lane. Yep. Uh, that new one that I don't think we've released any episodes uh, Lasc- Lascivious Lore. Yeah, we haven't released. I don't think we've released any episodes of Lascivious Lore yet. Yep. So you've got three, and then I have the SCP one and the Creepypasta yep. one. So that's five bonus six plus all the sub podcasts. We- so we-, we produce six podcasts. Under the uh, the Cryptopedia umbrella, <laughs> it's the Cryptopedia network. Yeah, and it, it has a resounding two people. <laughs> uh, okay. So tellings of the story vary, and it really does seem like everyone has their own iteration of the tale. Some people hear Frank Reynolds, other people have hear you know ominous c- chuckles. You know, that's how it goes. Mm-hmm. Um. In the original text, which I really wish I had, uh, there's a story of a husband and a wife who broke down on Route 44 and both have a wildly different encounter. Okay. So this is like the setup to a horror movie where you're you're just screaming at the screen where, why are you doing that? Stop. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Mm-hmm. No. Please stop. So, based on the summary I found on SpookySouthCoast.com, which is a local, like, um, it's like a local radio show is what I've I've gathered. Okay. So like it, it's it's a paranormal show that's from the Bridgewater Triangle area. Yeah. Um, the wife had stayed in the car while the husband went to get help. Okay. Um, which after like you know, I think yeah I did mention the breakdown. That's important. That's important. So. My since starting this podcast, my storytelling style has somehow gotten worse. <laughs> and I think part of that is because most of the stories that we tell on this podcast don't make sense. A lot of them don't. Um so husband leaves the car, right? Yeah. Um so what does the what does the wife do at the time? She uh doesn't really do anything. She's just kind of sitting in the car. Um <laughs> plays the game boy maybe i wish i wish i i i want to play a game boy i usually don't bring my game my my switch in the car with me because i'm usually the driver yeah so so if a situation like this happened i wouldn't have a switch to play um but i I do have a cell phone so maybe that'll do uh so the wife hears a voice coming from the car radio which taunt her taunts her until she leaves the car which Obviously, the correct answer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Decision-making so, skills, perfect. Yeah. It, it's kind of weird because the summary doesn't explain how she knew it 
it was the same thing that her husband's about to experience, but oh. I, I guess we can assume that she maybe made the like leap of logic or something like that. Yeah. So in the meantime, her husband encounters the... <laughs> <laughs> I wrote this two weeks ago, so sometimes uh, I get the joke <laughs> fresh. Yeah. Right? So, um... Meanwhile, her husband encountered the redheaded stepchild of the woman in white on the side of the road. <laughs> uh, the hitchhiker laughs at him, disappears, and laughs at him until he returns to the car in an incorporeal fashion. Okay. That's it. <laughs> so, I don't have the original text or details outside of a husband or wife. Yeah. Um... So I couldn't evaluate any of the claims in the story. Mm -hmm. uh, I look for more stories, but for the most part, they're more or less mundane phenomenon, like sudden flats, bad vibes, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes on and on and on. Okay. Um, most of them just like, you know, the, the weirdness just gets attributed to the ghost because of like, you know, uh, locational similarity, right? Yeah. Uh, which is, is very common in these types of stories, urban mm -hmm. legends and the like. Uh, if anything happens, you want to attribute it to the thing that you know. And I believe, I legitimately believe that more often than not, um, what people know predisposes them to what they're willing to believe. Yeah. Like if they've heard a story, um, even if they don't believe in it, they're more likely to believe in it. Or like if, even if they're a skeptic, they're more likely to believe in the story because it's been seeded in their mind. Yeah. Um, which results in an enhancement of any types of uh, peripheral effects that the the encounter or supernatural entity might impose on them. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it is interesting though to me uh, about the story that I couldn't find like a yeah back in the fifties a guy was hitchhiking down the road when suddenly uh, he was hit by a tractor trailer yada yada yada. Yeah. Um, there's no real point of origin for this okay. ghost, right? So it's just like a real urban, legend. which which is why which is why I called the like whole standalone complex thing yeah. as opposed to just an urban legend because like it really just doesn't fit. It kind of breaks the mold in terms of it just exists. Yeah, which is which is strange, right? Um, like, but like I couldn't find anything. There was no no logging accident. You know, there was, there was no bad prom night. Yeah. Close encounters with a semi. Nothing. nothing. <laughs> close encounters uh, with a semi is a good one. That's yeah. a good one. I like that one. It, it's a close encounter of the semi kind. Oh, no. I, I wasn't thinking of the semi kind. I was thinking of, like, a truck. Oh, no. I know. That's, that's okay. the semi kind. Okay. <laughs> uh, the, uh... You just hear uh, Optimus go, fuck you. <laughs> Oh, so it's the movie Optimus. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Because movie Optimus will tear a face off. Cartoon yeah. Optimus, he'll let his enemy live against all odds. And yeah. Um, so. Oh, jeez. I don't know what that was. Uh, <laughs> there may be more hay to be made of the phenomenon of hitchhiking ghosts. Okay. Um, like, in general, like, discussing them and how they're tied to the culture of cars in America and all yeah. that stuff. Um, but I, I think that that's a lot more extensive, so I'm not going to go into it yeah. this episode um, because I really would like to focus more on it mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's like, it's a weirdly pervasive urban legend. Okay. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. woman in white type story or, uh, you know, you're driving down the road and then you pick some girl up, you get to their house, they're gone. The father comes down like, Oh, they've been dead. My, my daughter died last year at the prom. You know. Yeah. One of those types of things. Um, mm -hmm. they, they, they also, like, incorporate a lot of, like, adult fear. And they, they're they fascinating stories to read. No, if, um, if there was adult fear, it would be... The, all the ghost stories would be adults having to interact with youths. It's true. Yeah. Which actually... That actually comes into play later in this episode. Oh, it does it? <laughs> yeah, so we'll we'll get to that. Um, for for now, I don't really have an explanation for the hitchhiker of Route 44. Um, like I said, I think it's one of those people hear a story and they're more willing to believe 
appreciate the story. Yeah. Or they're more willing to attribute something to something else. Um, and I don't have a concrete reprisal, but it's not really something that can be reprised. Mm. The the as always, the burden of proof is on the person making the claim. Yeah. Um. But I'm gonna leave you, Brandon, with a little little uh with the lamel. More, with a little one more little thing uh from the from the Bridgewater Triangle <laughs> documentary. <laughs> I like it. Boo. <laughs> it's just it, a guy in a in a in a plaid shirt leans forward, but he's all done up to look ghosty. And yeah. It, and uh the guy in the car doesn't look, seem too scared by it though. He does seem a little spooked. <laughs> he has a very uh he has a very um What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Hank Hill esque expression to it. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> um, that's not the last ghost story from the region, though. No. No. There's actually a few more. Um, not gonna do a a whole lot of ghost stories this episode, but you know, because because honestly, a lot of ghost stories follow the same thing. I saw something and then it disappeared. Yeah. There are a few cases where, like, this, when, when the story's more interesting, I'll tell that. But, okay. like, yeah, we could spend a whole episode just talking about ghost stories from the region. And, uh-huh. you know, a, I think a big part of a ghost story is the telling, mm-hmm. right? And, quite frankly, these aren't my stories. And that, that actually has a huge impact on whether or not you're going to actually find the story interesting. Yeah. You know? Because when you read it from the source's mouth, they have their own thing. It's, it's evolved. Mm. Um, it's it's gestated in their brain. Whereas for me, it's just like, oh, okay, cool. You think you saw a ghost? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, or hey, some person said that they saw a ghost. Because mm. I I'm not attached to it, and I've read it in the span of a week. Uh, so let's uh, since we're in Rebo- Rehoboth still, okay. Let's uh, let's go to the Horbine School. Uh, it's a one. It's a one-room schoolhouse. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. It all it looks an awful lot like that's, Horbrine. That's how I, that's what I like to soak my pickled peppers in. Mm. <laughs> the Horbrine. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty hard to come by, though, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's because the tassel room key... Oh, never mind. I'm not... I'm, uh, <laughs> Ta- uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I follow the logic. The tassel yeah. worm. The tassel worm is uh, getting that whole brine up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, fun fact about this school name. Yeah. Uh, uh, it autocorrects to hero brine, and I hate it. Oh no. <laughs> Which is it does. I right clicked on it. It it it, it autocorrects to hero brine, and that's not a joke. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the hero dr- hero brine is a creepy pasta, effectively from uh, Minecraft. Minecraft, where it's like Notch's brother or something, soul inside a Minecraft, or I don't know. It's it, it's it's one of those obviously fake things that enough people believed in, so people started making mods to add the hero brine, mm-hmm. and then people were convinced that the hero brine was in it. But I don't think there's ever been any like actual evidence to support that. It it, there was just like a skin texture that was in there or some that. Regardless, um, so I have to remove that sentence because this is from when this is the end of uh, part two. Oh, gotcha. Uh, so to end like the dive into ghostly phenomena in the Bridgewater Triangle, because I'm not going to cover anything else this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, let's take a back trip back to school, Brandon. Okay. So just get get in the head ba- headspace, right? Gotcha. Uh, let's see. Um, see, for me, I, I for me, getting back into the headspace of school, just writing a lot, like a lot, it's, to the point uh, that my hand physically hurts. Oh, see, for me, it's like, let's see, Jenkos. Uh, I've got a CD player that can store MP3s. Uh, well, well, longer Jen- hair. Jenkos weren't that big. Well, what 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 part of school am I thinking? Elementary, middle, or high school? High high school. High school. Yeah, Jinkos. The uh, lots of gray. For some reason, jackets. I don't remember you wearing Jinkos. There's they weren't like the crazy umbrella like parachute Jinkos. Oh, okay. Maybe that's maybe that's why I'm not 
they like, lo- they looked more closer to normal jeans. <laughs> yeah, that's that's honestly why I'm like, what are you talking about? Man? Yeah, no, they weren't the ones that that they weren't like four jeans worth of material in in one pair or anything like that. <sighs> what a, I, I'm sorry, but what a dumb concept Jinko jeans are. I thought they were so cool. Like the real big ones? Yeah. Really? Yeah. God damn it, Brandon. How are you going to save yourself in the event of a... Well, actually, now that I think about it, Jinko jeans might be the perfect survival tool. Right? Holy shit. <laughs> and the I crazy did... long wallet chain? Well, that that... I had a... In middle school, I had a wallet chain that was attached to a fluffy wallet. And by fluffy, <laughs> I mean fluffy from Harry Potter. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was leather. <laughs> um, so Rehoboth claims to be the birthplace place of uh, public education in America. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that's true, though. I, I, It's one of those things where when people claim to be the first of anything, right? It's like, oh, well, we're the first at this. Then you look over and someone else is like, well, we're the first at this. Yeah. And then it's like, then it becomes a question of like, all right, well, let's talk semantics. Let's talk yada, yada, yada. Right. So they claim to be the birthplace of public education. I'll let you decide if they deserve to have that mantle or not. Okay. If you, if you so care to look into that, because it doesn't have literally anything to do with the story. <laughs> Uh, the single room schoolhouse known as the Horbrine School yeah. uh, was constructed in 1845 and is said by some to be haunted. Okay. One such story goes a school teacher was visiting the schoolhouse. Um, they go up to the, uh, the door. It's locked, right? So they kind of walk around the side of the house because yeah. they see, oh, oh, the shutters are open. Let me look inside. Yeah. Right. Look in, they, they look inside, and they see uh, a full class. See? Like a full class of students with a with a school marm. Which okay, is, what's a marm? A marm is like a old-timey teacher. Okay. Um, lecturing a class full of children. Yeah. So the teacher, who believes this to be a reenactment of some time, uh, basically goes around back to the front and like tries to check the door, and it's locked again it's still. Yeah. Right? So they knock, you know, ba 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 no response. Mm-hmm. So she goes back to the open window. Uh, this time, the teacher who's in the classroom is staring at her. And then all the other inhabitants of the room slowly fade away before the actual human teacher's mind, eyes. Okay. And that's the story. So that, well, that was cool, but I think a cooler version would be when she goes in and she thinks that, like, it's a class... Um, mm-hmm. like a normal class, and she looks out the window from inside, and then it's like the 1800s outside when she looks out the window and she runs outside, and then she's actually in the 1800s, and then she was in a time traveling school. That's some magic school bus level stuff right there. Yeah, that would actually be pretty interesting, but I feel like it's been done. Maybe that's some uh, well, man, that just reminded me of Wishbone. Oh, I miss Wishbone. Remember that? Like he would. Like there was like he was dressed up as William Shake, Doggo. Shakebone or something like that yeah. one time. And wasn't he like if my memory of that is correct, didn't he like inhabit the the main character role what, during the stories? Yes. And it was just the story, like, you know, Sleepy Hollow, but with a with a with a little pooch. Yeah, a little doggo in there. I'm gonna pull up Wishbone uh theme song. Oh wait, here we go. Bark to the future? Wait, what? Brandon. Yeah? Brandon. Brandon. Yeah? Bark to the future. Bark to the future. Oh, no. I just, like... How did this happen? Right? Like... How did... How did something like this get, like... Because it's perfect. That's why. That's how something but happened. You're not wrong. I, I think it's phenomenal. Yeah. And I do love the fact, like, I think he's, let's see, 
Paul Prince of Thieves, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, Homer Sweet Homer, A Tale in Twain. <laughs> These names. Bone of Arc, Brandon. Oh, I saw Bone of Arc. That was a good one. Frankenbone. There was 135 episodes of Wishbone. Because it's fantastic. Oh, wait. No, there was not. There, there, that's the there was that was because there's multiple parts yeah uh just like this is great i'm just watching wishbone now yeah I, that's what this podcast has kind of become yeah like i remember that i wanted a jack russell terrier so bad because of that show all episodes aired in order <laughs> let's 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 see the mutt Kateer, hercules unleashed viva wishbone Panton of the Opera. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, listeners, but this is this is too good. Oh, this this theme song is so bad. Oh, <gasps> there's a Greek one where all the Greek statues. It's Wishbone, but all the statues are of little doggos. <sighs> oh, here we go. Shake's paw. That was the one I was thinking of. Anywho, oh, gotcha. Uh, so that's been. Another sub podcast where we talk about Wishbone. You know what? That actually might be a unique one. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, for the final phenomena, we're going to probably cover this episode. Okay. And we'll probably cover for some time because I think I need a break from Bridgewater Triangle after this particular one. <laughs> uh, we're going to go to uh, back to the Freetown State Forest where there exists a rock which happens to look like a face. Okay. It, it's called the uh, Profile Rock, um, and I've got some pictures in the show notes. Yeah, and oh, some it pictures looks like a there. Face. It does look like a face. Yeah. Um, it is frequently cited in discussions of the Bridgewater Triangle. Uh, what for? Uh, that's a good question. We're going to get into that, but it's really a clear case of pareidolia, no matter what. There's by listen, definition there's a rock that looks like a face at Mohonk, and where. Up near uh, Alexandria Bay, there's another like there's another rock. It's, it's not super called profile common. rock, but it it's looks like common. a face of a person. So they named it after a dude. Like rocks, it's cool when you see them, but like there's a bunch of them. There are a bunch of them. So it's pareidolia. Basically, basically, yeah, it's pareidolia, but there's like supernatural phenomena associated with it, and it has a legend, and it's it's a sacred site for the Wampanoag. Um, which we're going to get into all that. Mm-hmm. So, the history of Profile Rock is surprisingly, unsurprisingly uh, muddled. Um, because <laughs> if no. that didn't make sense, get ready, because I nearly lost my mind trying to understand all the oh, little all bits the and pieces stuff. of this. Yeah. So... Between the three sources I found, these are the consistent facts. Profile Rock, or the Old Man of Joshua Mountain, was named for Joshua Tisdale, a settler who had the deed to the land approximately 1714. Um, It is generally considered to be a sacred site to the Wampanoag people, with a face belonging to Sashem, or Masowit, the father of Metacom, from episode one. Mm -hmm. Um, And I will say this... I thought that they were talking about two separate people uh, when they, because one source would say Sackham and the other yeah. source would say Masowit. Oh, I gotcha. His full name is like Masowit Sackham. Oh. And I don't know why there's like a weird inconsistency in what people will call it. Yeah. Um, huh. Medicom also, at some point before his death in Medicom's war, uh, visited the rock and during this visit it said that like he cried for the first time ever or something like that um basically the long and short of it is it's supposed to establish it as a place of extreme sadness gotcha right or um tragedy or something along those lines where there's like a psychic imprint left by king philip or medicom right Mm -hmm. um the origin of the rock however And this is where I lost my mind. (laughs) Uh, Oh, oh, good. Is extremely divergent. And uh, the earliest reported date varies source to source. 
So Atlas Obscura, which was the first source I used for this, claims that it was created in the mid 1800s. Um, while other sources, uh, Spooky, Spooky South Coast and Herald News, claim something earlier, or at okay. least as far as I could understand, it was claimed to be earlier. Their yeah. reporting was honestly the reporting by everyone was a little bit sloppy in this case. Okay, I dig it. I buy it. I believe it. Yeah. Um. The only limit I can impose on what the definitive date that this rock would have formed is uh, 1661. Okay. Because if it falls in line with the proposed lore that it is uh, Masowitz's face, uh, that's his year of death. Oh, okay. Right? So based on that, we can say, all right, if it's earlier than this, then whatever. It, it, It can't, it can't, physically be earlier than this for the lore to make sense yeah i dig it right um the age matters to me because if the rock was first found prior to 1867 it's most likely natural erosion that caused it it was found after 16 1867 um i legitimately believe that it makes more sense than it might be dynamite that created it because that's when albert noble discovered dynamite okay now whether or not the rock was formed naturally, I think it might be Albert Nobel. Yes, it is Nobel. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is Nobel. I, I don't know why I said Nobel. Um, because he's the Nobel guy. Yeah, yeah, because he was so upset by the destructive power of the thing that he created. Yeah. Uh, that he wanted to make the world better, so he created the Nobel Prize, so people would basically pursue science to make the world better. Yep. Um, literally the thing and. Honestly, I'll give the dude credit. Yeah. Uh, So, I got, like, really obsessed at this point with whether or not the rock was natural or not. Yeah. And my rationale for that was because I feel like it's a key part of the story to me because I think, oh, if it's natural, then maybe it's something – like, maybe – the arg- like it doesn't make the either argument correct or not, like whether or not it's supernatural or not. It's just <sighs> you just needed to know. I needed to know. It like it, it consumed <laughs> me in a way that I can't even ar- ar- articulate. Like yeah. it, it was it was one of those moments where I was trying to make a point about like uh you know if if this is wrong then yada yada yada. But then I realized that it literally doesn't matter if it was naturally created or created by dynamite. Yeah, because um, if it was naturally created or created by dynamite, you could argue that either of them were paranormally influenced. So it doesn't really matter (laughs) because, you know, the rules are fast and loose with paranormal events. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was originally concerned that if it was created by dynamite, it had been a scam. Yeah, but I looked into it and there was nothing that really pointed to the person scamming. Gotcha. So it that was like a theory that I had didn't hold water. So, you know, I did what really anyone should do. And Mm -hmm. I rejected the theory because there was not enough evidence to support it. Okay. But, um, however, even though I recognize the fact that it probably wasn't a scam, knowing whether or not it was naturally created really probably didn't matter all that much. Mm -hmm. I got obsessed as I said before. Yeah. And I channeled my inner Saul Malone on this. (laughs) Um, I looked at way too many pictures of rocks, rocks and started making unsubstantiation, unsubstantiated <laughs> estimations about the origin of profile rock. And yeah, I, I, I had my theme song linked in the uh, the show notes for all to hear and see if they so choose. I love, <laughs> I like that picture, the archival photograph of you. Yeah. yeah. No, that that honestly, I found that picture. I'm like, that's that's pretty much what I how I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to point out the song that I included, Brandon. Yeah. That song has no joke been stuck in my brain since it came out. Oh, no. On repeat. My apologies. Yes. I have literally, um, so this movie, this song, this show came out in like, I want to say 2007. Holy okay. shit, I was right. So, since 2007, I have had the song Mustache Ride 
<laughs> stuck in my head. Every time I grow a mustache, it plays. <laughs> Um, so I've been, I've been living in a house. Uh, so my unsubstantiated estimations about the origin of Proverbial Rock, as I said before, but I was unable to pronounce, uh, are that I personally think the face was created by dynamite. Okay. Um, and the rationale for that is the older pictures tend to have much sharper lines and cleaves, um, and look more like erosion in quotes, uh, by dynamite. Yeah. Right. So if you if you drive through New York State um, up I eighty seven, eighty seven, eighty seven. Yeah, eighty seven. If you drive up I eighty seven, you'll see a lot of rocks cleared by dynamite. Um, yeah. Typically that shale, uh, on the side of the road there, but it, it a lot of rocks have like it shale does have that cleave pattern, and yeah. in the case of profile rock, it is granite, right? Mm-hmm. Now I say that because basically, and this is this you can see how I've gone insane because I didn't write any of this. Yeah, I just remember this now. Um, <laughs> this is a part of my brain. So, in the case of uh, profile rock, it's grant it's a granite structure, right? Mm-hmm. And the thing with granite is uh, it has a very characteristic wear pattern. Yeah, right. So. It wears down to be much smoother over time, which all rocks do, but because of the quartz content and the like, you know, silica content, it tends to do it a little bit more noticeably. And like, if yeah. you look at pictures of wind eroded granite, it tends to be like very, I want to say wispy, but that's not really a good adjective for a rock. Yeah. Um. But basically because of that and if you look at the older pictures the outlines are sharper yeah in the newer pictures they definitely curved out a lot more uh-huh which makes me think that perhaps someone dynamited the site and over time it's been eroding yeah now i am not a geologist i just play one on tv <laughs> uh so take everything i just said with a grain of quartz yeah 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 Salt's also a, salt can also be a rock, but quartz is more fun because it's more halite. Halite. Yeah. Um. So really, it doesn't matter though. Yeah. I spent like an hour and a half reading about rocks. Oh, good, good. <laughs> and singing about mustaches. And thinking about ro- mustaches, singing about mustaches. Um, realizing that there's a depressingly small amount of clips on YouTube from Saul of the Bull Men. Uh, <laughs> I'm still upset that they didn't get renewed for a season two. They were going to go to space. They were going to go to space. Although all of it's on Adult Swim, so I super recommend watching it if you like absurdist humor. Yeah, everyone does. Some... Absurdist, it's the best kind of humor, man. I know people who don't like absurdist humor. Who? Coworkers. Nah, get out of here. Um, but it, it kind of goes a little bit farther because I, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I watched it. Um, one of the mole people. So basically the way that the story works is, uh, strata, which was a, um, scientific organization, a, a scientific operation to drill to the center of the earth. Strata is drilling to the center of the earth and they make them something happens where, the ship crashes and everyone dies except for Saul Malone, uh, a pop singer, and a robot. Right? Uh, yeah. And so that's the setup. And then they land in, in like the center of the earth and there's a bunch of mole people and rocks and all that stuff and uh, bat birds. And it, it's a whole thing. Mm-hmm. So in one episode, one of the mole people named Junior who's a young mole person that Saul Malone has befriended, uh, experiences puberty. Oh, okay. But for for the mole people, they have to catch their genitalia. Ah, okay, that makes sense. So that's the whole plot of an episode. (laughs) Anywho, (laughs) 
I like the show. So, here's the fun part. Uh-huh. I haven't told you anything paranormal about this rock. It's just a rock at this point. Yeah. So, first and foremost, the rock being prolific, secluded, and naturally, it naturally is a hotbed for the most horrifying of paranormal activity. Oh. Wow. Let me try that again. Naturally, it is a hotbed for the most horrifying of paranormal activity, teenagers. Oh, no. The site is consistently plagued with parties and graffiti. <laughs> a Google search for profile rock graffiti results in a ton of hits. One, 1420 WBSM, New Bedford's New Talk Stadium. Wow. New Bedford's <laughs> News Talk Station. I was not great. Uh, article paints a picture of repeated vandalism and cleanup. Referenced is an official statement by the police in 2016 after the rock had been cleaned up the year prior. <laughs> which I guess they use like a sandblasting technique that use crushed walnut shells, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, dear Josh, J, Bree, and Julia. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait! Before you read it, so there's an image of um of some rocks, and there's some uh, graffiti on it. Some is orange, some is black, and it says it looks like a uh, Josh, J, Bree, Julia. Was there an orange? And then someone wrote, "What's that?" Petty, Petty Ryan, Ryan Tony, Tony, something like yeah. that. Yeah, and then there's some more inside. Uh, there's a lot the of background. graffiti. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of graffiti. Um, ooh, that was bad. You now have our attention. We have opened up a felony tagging investigation and look forward to meeting you soon. If anyone has any information in helping us identify these perpetrators who vandalize Profile Rock, please contact the Freetown Police Department. Five a bit, a bit, a bit. We don't need to read their number. Um, you can be anonymous. Please share this post. Thank you in advance. Freetown Fall River State Forest. Bristol County Sheriff's Department Anti-Graffiti Unit. Yeah. I love the... <laughs> so there's a few things I love about this. One, yeah. Bristol County has an anti-graffiti unit. <laughs> yeah. Two, not only is this, a, like, honestly a spiteful graffiti... Because it, it is a historic landmark that's held sacred by the Walker Noeg people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's incredibly vain and really vain, devoid of any artistic merit. Like, Oh, yeah. yeah. There, there's, so tagging implies that there, there's some kind of artistry and skill to it. It's really just like some kids wrote their names with spray paint. Yeah, it, it's, it's just shitty. Yeah. Um, and if I was their uh, graffiti instructor, as as makes an appearance in the Boondocks, um, I'd fail them. Yeah, yeah, no, they're not. Didn't do they're too not, hot. It's not good graffiti. It's not no. enjoyable graffiti. It's not anything. It's just being shitty. Yeah. Um, but in a more serious note, uh, in addition to being a sacred site that teenagers have a fun time disrespecting, which teenagers. Yeah. Uh, there are rumors of ghosts in the area. Typically, Ooh. the sightings following a pattern. A man appears, frequently described as having darker skin, sometimes bald, sometimes with hair, you know, one of those mm -hmm. types of things where the, the direct appearance kind of varies a little bit, case to case. Yeah. Um, he gestures in some way to the person who he's who's sighting him, and then disappears. Yeah. Leaving. Jeez, I'm really gassy today. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving the witness with a profound sense of sadness. Yeah. Um, believers speculate that this is Metacom's grief reaching out to the ages. And his incorporeal form appears at one of the last places he had been. Now, we mentioned this on episode one, Brando. Okay. I feel like I should mention the stone cape theory. Uh, okay. It's a thing that Reachers would talk about, and calling it the stone tape theory is not even close to, like, at all right, because it's more like the stone tape speculation. Yeah. And even then, it's not even close. Um, I want to be perfectly clear before I go into any detail, though. This is grade A major hooey. Yeah. Like, there's no evidence to even remotely support the idea that this works. And effectively, it was a theory born in the 19th century. You know, when all that, like, weird parapsychology stuff was happening. Yeah. Um, and it's derived from the notion of place memory, which we talked about a little bit in episode one. 
of yeah. the series. Uh, I don't like this theory. Uh, it's a theory that speculates that rocks store uh, psychic energy, right? So, yeah. like, psychic trauma, um, events happening there, et cetera, et cetera. People, yeah. Some people believe that intense psychic energy will imprint itself and write to a, a rock as though it were a quote-unquote tape. Yeah. Um, huge leaps, leaps of logic here. And I don't really want to go into crazy twice in one episode, so I didn't dig too deep into this part. I dug <laughs> I dug for an hour and a half on rocks because yeah. now I know more about granite. Uh-huh. If I dig for an hour and a half on stone tape, I'll just be angry. Oh angrier. yeah. Um. So I'm gonna just let uh, Theodore Schick and Louis Vaughn explain my per- personal uh, rejection of it for okay. me, because I didn't feel like writing my own personal rejection. Okay. The problem is that we know of no mechanism that could record such information in the stone. Or play it back. Chunks of stone just do not have the same properties as reels of tape. <laughs> uh, it's weird that someone had to say that. It really, really is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the argument could be made that a quartz bearing rock might have some more chance of storing energy because the quartz could vibrate, but that wouldn't be a very good mechanism for storing energy and then there's other you could also make the argument that like you know there's certain solid state technologies coming out that are read only like you write it once and then it's read only so that is also a possibility however that doesn't mean that it's releasing it into the atmosphere as spirits yeah so there is a there is a difference because like the whole even speculation requires like three different things that are not supported by any form of known science before you can even get to the point of having even the speculation that this thing happens. Like, yeah. ghosts have to exist. Spiritual energy has to be something that is produced by people and can have an impact on the world. Um, and, like, it's just those two things alone already have so many things that they depend on. So it's like, you're like three theories deep. You're, you're like three hypotheses deep before you even have anything to like latch yeah. onto. <laughs> so, I mean, and I mentioned that because Profile Rock is a granite. It's a granite stone, so it has quartz in it, right? Yeah. Um. Well, most likely has some form of quartz or silica, and. You know, it has a ghost associated with it. So it makes sense that, you know, if you know that this theory exists and you believe in it, you might explain it away as that. Yeah. Right. I didn't really see many people talking about it, but like, so maybe this is a straw man on my part, which my my bad. Um, but it is a thing that has been talked about. And I think I, I've heard it on episodes of Ghost Hunters mm-hmm. and stuff like that, which is where I like first learned about it. But it's just one of those cases where it's just, it's not useful. It's not a useful theory. It doesn't explain anything. And it doesn't, it doesn't offer any solutions to any problems. (laughs) Like what happens if the stone gets broken? Right. Do you have like half a, like half a ghost appear? That would be crazy. Like maybe that's how like, uh, oh, what was the whatever maybe that's how like a ghost that's cut in half appears or is missing a head or yeah maybe that's what that's where the headless horseman came from oh the it. rock broke off got it I, I understand now makes sense but you know that's what i'm trying to say um there are other stories from the freetown state park i don't know if i'm going to go into them for some time and okay. one of the main reasons for that is because it's a lot of satanic panic like yeah there's a lot of stories in this region. Most of them are the same or they're satanic panic. And while ghost stories, like we cover ghost stories almost exclusively on this episode. Um, they're already far, kind of farther away from cryptids. Yeah. 
I don't really want to go into satanic panic because that's just people being dicks to people. Yeah. So, um, I think I'm going to take a little bit of a break from uh, Bridgewater Triangle. I might come back at some point in the future. Uh-huh. Uh, but we're going to go somewhere a little more otherworldly for the next one. Okay. guess what? It's episode 42, Brandon. Oh! Towel episodes. It's a towel episode, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. So... Get ready for that. Yeah. Um, I've got one or two things that I'm researching. I, I still haven't decided which one it's going to be yet, though. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I got for the Bridgewater Triangle indefinitely. Uh, I definitely missed a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're interested in the Bridgewater Triangle, listeners, uh, I do have... Whoa! Oh. <laughs> every single time. Every single time we close out... So I do have sources, um, and there's there's probably more stuff than what I've talked about here. Like I didn't even go into the whole notion of like the wampum belt was stolen, and that is why all the stuff happens or things yeah. along those nature. Because like, I, I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot of interesting stuff, but of all the things I talked about, the only thing that conclusively happened or exists. Uh Uh-oh. Oh. I think I lost you for a second there. Yep, I lost you for a second. We're back. Okay. So, even though I talked about, like, a a bunch of stuff on this, and there's, like, a bunch of stuff that happens in the Bridgewater Triangle, only two of the, like, nine or ten stories I told have, like, a concrete basis in fact. Yeah. And that's Metacom's War... And the fact that Profile Rock exists. <laughs> it does exist. Yeah. We can we can conclusively say that. But, you know, I mean, I think they're all interesting stories. And um, I'm sure that there's more to it. And maybe one of these days I'll take a trip over to Massachusetts and take a look around in the areas. Um, we'll go puck wudgie hunting. Puck wudgie hunting. You carry a, you carry a bag and a uh, rum ham. Um, and a rum ham. Mm-hmm. Maybe a toe knife. Definitely a toe knife. And you pitch the idea that the, the blankets could be the dirt. Yes. Uh, but regardless, uh, I think it's time to bring this episode to uh, a close so I can not fall asleep on it. Our website is com. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. If you um, want to get in contact with us, you can email us at cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. We have a Patreon. Things happen there. You can rate, you can review, you can subscribe to us, and you can send us a monster request if you enjoy the show. You could find me on Instagram. I'm at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com, and my Twitter is at crypto brandon. My descent into madness continues um, at mu2057 on Instagram and at jfdunham on Twitter. My website is johndunnamgames.com, and my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at thomasmichaelhill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And uh, things have continued to stay weird. <laughs>